Hey, welcome to another fireside chat. As you can see, we have got our fire going here on this beautiful, beautiful Tuesday here in Northwest Montana. And uh, I just want to go over a quick announcement for you guys. And I got a message I want to share, a devotional on peace. Read a little bit from this book by Billy Graham, Hope for Each Day. Then we'll uh, take a little time to pray this morning. But I do want to remind everyone that Sunday morning's announcements sometimes are a little bit behind. So remember, we are recording those Thursday evenings as part of our worship online worship gathering and then airing it Sunday morning. So sometimes that can be a little bit behind. We try to be as forward thinking as possible when we put those together. But uh, sorry about, I know there was some confusion created because Saturday in the fireside chat we made mention and this is the accurate uh, announcement that this coming Thursday night is actually when we are going to be holding our first live in-person worship gathering at the church uh, location. Mm -hmm. And so we hope you can make it. We are going to continue on though with our Sunday morning worship gatherings online. And we will actually record that then Thursday with the, the group that does show up. Um, we also we will also continue with our Saturday morning uh, Coffee Connects by way of Zoom. And so we just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, but also keep this in mind. You may want to come early uh, Thursday. The service will start at 7 o'clock. Our worship team will be gathering to practice at 6 o'clock. But feel free to come whenever because we only have room for 56 people. Now we do have more chairs out, but because of the social distancing that we need to um, put in place, we only have room for 56 people. Now this does not include the children and the nursery, which we want to make sure you guys know that will be going. We will have our workers there for that and we've got measures in place so that our children can uh, enjoy a safe environment and well you know kids, we're going to try to do as best as we can with the social distancing. What we can do is keep them to groups of five or less, but uh, just realize parents, you may have to scrub your kids down thoroughly head to toe afterwards because kids like to share everything. So anyway, and we're just going to be going from seven o'clock until eight o'clock. It'll be a one hour worship service. And uh, so we really hope that you're going to be able to join us. We are really looking forward to it. Um, I, I will also caution everyone, if you are older and if you do have health problems, we're really encouraging you at this time to continue to remain home because even though our sanctuary, our facility is larger, um, it can only handle so many people. So trying to pack everybody in and keep everybody apart, <laughs> we can only do so much. So anyway, um, this morning I wanted to share a little bit about God's peace. Um, I know peace is not the absence of trouble, it's not the absence of difficulties. If it were that, we wouldn't need peace, would we? When things are going well, the job's going well, we've got steady income, our relationships are doing well, we really don't need God's peace. And uh, so that peace, when God comes and brings his peace, it, it doesn't mean there's going to be an absence of difficulties, an absence of problems in our lives. Uh, God's peace is really when God comes in his presence, in the person of his spirit, and he comes into our lives and supernaturally reassures us that everything's going to be all right, that he has our lives taken care of, and we can trust him. We're we're resting them in the palm of his hands. And, and that's really where peace comes from. So even if you're in the midst of problems and smoke filling your life and whatever else, God's peace is really about his presence. And so this morning I want to read just this short devotional from Billy Graham's book, uh, Hope for Each Day. And here it talks about walk with God. And he quotes from Psalm 101, verse 6. He says, My eyes shall be on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. And that's coming from God's perspective. And my perspective is going to move forward a little bit here. <laughs> Get out of this smoke. Sometimes we have to change our pos positions in life too to enjoy God's peace. But here Billy Graham writes, Walk with God 
as Noah did when the flood came. <clears throat> Noah was saved amidst the scorn and rejection of his neighbors. Walk with God as Moses did in the solitude of the desert. When the hour of judgment fell upon Egypt, Moses was prepared to lead his people to victory. Walk with God as David did as a shepherd boy. When he was called to rule his people, he was prepared for the task of kingship. And walk with God as Daniel and his three young friends did in the palace of Babylon's king. When the fiery furnace and the lion's den came, God was beside them and delivered them. No, God didn't always deliver his saints from adversity or even death, nor does he today. But because they had learned to trust him in the light, in the good, they were prepared to follow him in the darkness of night when things went bad. God has not promised to deliver us from trouble, but he has promised to go with us through the trouble. Psalm 23 verse 4 says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And that's the promise I really want you to catch this morning, and I hope you can focus your quiet times, your prayer times, even the busyness of your day, you can focus on that, that even though God does not always remove us from adversity, all the difficulties of life and this pandemic, God walks with us through it. And that's where he comes in the supernaturalness of his presence. He comes into our lives when we allow him, when we seek him, when we pursue him. He comes to us and he walks with us and he reassures us that it's going to be all right, that he has our lives taken care of and we can trust him. Though we may not see it, God is faithful. And so here's the prayer. It's tempting to look at men and women in Scripture and think they were superhuman or ultra-holy. The same God who walked with them walks with us. We just need to remain faithful knowing that His eyes are on us. And that is so nice to know, isn't it? It uh, gives us hope. It reassures us that God wants to dwell with us and He wants us to dwell with Him. So I hope that encourages you today that with whatever you're facing, whatever may lie ahead, remember these are the days that we live in of Christ's return. He is coming soon. And so the signs are just going to keep increasing in which God is trying to wake people in this world up to the fact of His return and that they need Him. So we as believers need to stay anchored to Christ in the midst of all that goes on because these sorts of things, I have a feeling, friends, are going to keep happening more and more as we get closer to that day when Christ returns. But friends, we can walk in peace. We can rest knowing that our lives are taken care of by our God. So would you pray with me today? And let's remember this in prayer. Father, I just thank you that we can trust you, that you do have our lives in the palm of your hands, and that, God, you are the one who knows the future. You are the one who has it all planned out. We as human beings, we don't we don't know even what tomorrow holds, let alone what later this year holds. But God, you do. And when we walk with you, your desire is to lead us safely through all the adversities of this world. And, and, and Father, we as believers, we can trust that because you want us to be bright lights for you in a dark world while you have us here still. You want us to be those bright lights. And so as we are reaching out in love to our neighbors and to our family members, people we work with, as we're, we're demonstrating your love. As we're getting that message of your gospel out, as we're getting that message out of the soon return of your son Jesus, God, you're going to make every provision available for us so we can get that message out. And Lord, help us to trust in you. Help us to rest in you, God. Lord, I pray your peace would supernaturally guard our hearts and our minds every time fear and uncertainty begins to well up. And we turn to you, God, would you reassure us with your peace. Give us rest. And Lord, give us boldness to get your message out. And Father, I also pray another thing, that your joy will be our strength in these days we live in. And God, we look forward to what you do as you write your stories in our lives and in this world. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, if you are able to, um, 
If uh, your health conditions permit and you feel comfortable with it, we hope to see you Thursday night for our worship gathering. Remember, come early. Seats are limited. <clears throat> And uh, if we have to next week, we can always do a second service and uh, make reservations for the two services. But we'll see how it goes this week, and we'll start at 7 o'clock. And then Sunday morning, we will have our worship, our, our online worship gathering replayed for those of you who could not make it to be with us Thursday night. And so until then, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day.